Okay, this is the fully industrial period. I say because you don't need workers, you don't need all those hands, you have a decreasing birth rate. Because of industrialization, sanitation, health care, uh, death rate continues to decrease. You still have a population increase, but at a slower rate. The examples written in the early 20th century, like we just looked at, um, we, just, we just looked at uh, a, a little while ago in Brazil and Mexico, where they're fully industrialized. They said the birth rate decreases due to basically. Uh, Total fertility rate of 2.0, basically replacement. Improvements in contraceptive technology, where birth control, condoms, uh, birth you know birth control pills, what have you, is more widely spread. Changes in values about children and sex. Parents need fewer children. Next, you know, it's not an agricultural society anymore. Parents need fewer hands. Uh, the social system uh, and industrialization allows people to live without um, without the need for manual labor. Parents need fewer children. Rising costs of dependent children and family to a family. Children are, are no longer assets. They are liabilities and it costs to get them to maturity. So you have fewer of them. The, the evaluation of women beyond motherhood. They don't need then no longer needed to be baby factories. So they are fully in the labor force. If they're if they're working mothers, they don't have the time to devote to children or child rearing. Death rate is very low. Due to better health care, vaccinations, better understanding of the spread of diseases. Prenatal care, you, more children are alive or kept alive. More mothers are kept alive and a few of them die in, ch in childbirth. There we again, improve sanitation. Sanitation is the number one reason for an extended life. Sanitation in food, sanitation in homes, in personal hygiene. Improve quality and quantity of food. If the industrial and agricultural revolution did nothing else, they improved the quantity and quality of food. Food was very bad in a in, food is very bad in a in a pre-industrial society. Population change. You have a you have a, a broad cohort in what would they call a working population or population uh, population that re, what they call reproductive, but reproductive was also a, pro, a productive society. Large cohort between fifteen and forty five. Population growth is still a little greater than one percent but slowing your doubling time is not quite what it was in the pre-industrial society but it is you can see it's slowing quite a bit this is the age structure you can see the broad middle whereas 
most of these folks and again people doubt it most of these folks would have already have died in a pre-industrial society most of these folks would have been gone in a pre-industrial society between the ages between the between the ages of 30 especially between the ages of 35 and 55 most of these folks wouldn't even be here because you can see in the pre-industrial society that structure uh 20 only 20 percent actually survived to be uh over 35 years old 80 percent of your struck your your pre-industrial structure was under under 30 under 30 years of age okay the age structure of pop of the population period decreasing total fertility rate you can see it right there decreasing children a bulge in the reproductive cohort in other words that broad middle that we see that's a that's that 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 bulge that we see that that industrial bulge fully industrial bulge that we see because the society is getting older they're living longer a narrowing of the base fewer children people live longer you can see that the that the age structures are about even because fewer people actually die that is one good um, indication of people actually living longer and the death rate actually being low because people actually live to be the older ages now here is Scotland in 1951 and you can see that shape you can see you can see the, the broad bulge from ages 55 from 35 to 55 you can you can see that you can see that broad bulge you can see the narrowing of the base where they're having fewer children and you can also see you can also see the increase of people over 62 or 65 years old even though this is still about 5% So that myth that uh, that the, the majority of people actually live to be uh, older than 65 is still not true. And this is in 1951. This is almost 200 years after the Industrial Revolution started in Scotland. Okay, this is the post-industrial period. This is a fully matured industrial system. This is when this is the aging population. This is when the full effects of the industrial system has felt been felt and fully matured. Crude birth rate is still low. That's a problem. Crude death rate is still low. So you have a lot of aging people. It's stable, but there's a problem. The rate of natural increase is stable. In other words, these two things that were in sync in pre-industrial have now come back in sync in a post-industrial. This is the restabilization. And you can see that's what's going on. That's what did go on. That's what's going on. Did go on in the late 20th century in Northern Europe and Japan. It said that the birth rate is low due to the fertility rate being 2.1 or just at just at replacement. Okay, family planning. In other words, the women plan their families and less accidental preg pregnancies good health good health for the mothers good health for the children there's the less need the birth rate can be low because less babies die improved status of women better health of women 
later marriages this is key this is very key then in our, in our next segment this is going to be even more of a key low death rate again due to improved health we went over that high high quality and quant quantity and quality of food we went over that population change this is at the zero population growth total fertility rate falls to replacement fertility levels at 2.1 this this figure is key and it's going to become key in the next segment zero population growth reach this is what industrial uh, countries had had been shooting for for over a century stable but high population size because very few people act, very few people actually die population growth is just over one percent doubling time is a uh, approximately a thousand years because you're at virtually zero replacement rate at uh, zero population growth you can see this you see this in the uh, post-industrial the bulge is even more pronounced you can see the birth rate at the bottom and the old age rate at the top are virtually the same you can see how the bulge has moved from here in the pre-industrial to here in the post-industrial whereas most people would have most people in the pre-industrial would have been gone before here there's the majority of them are still alive here the age structure of population characterized by stability, zero population growth. Age structure becomes older, as we can see. Here is a classic example of what we're talking about. This is Germany in 2005. Now, Germany industrialized in the early 19th century right after uh, Britain did Germany embraced um, industrialization so th this is a very mature industrialized country you can see the bulge and this is this bulge is after a lot of the arms bearing men in Germany died in two wars so you can still see the uh, bulge that we're talking about right here we have a lot of folks that are, are a lot of folks in the middle, the heavy population, the majority of folks are old. They're over the age of 35. And you can see the low reproductive rate down here where there are very few or not very few, but uh, a lot less um, children being born. They're at zero population growth. In fact, they're less than zero. They're under. They're they're under re, uh, uh, reproduction, and you can see the very old structure at the top where you got a lots and lots of people in their seventies and in their eighties. You can see that you can you know just going through this you can see the demographic shift. So it tells you right there that the structure now what we see now is not what we saw back then. And we can't, you know, before the agricultural age, it was probably even less or even worse. Canada shows the same bulge. Now, Canada, uh, if the population is low and they, it has a, a large immigrant class. Otherwise, their structure will be, look a lot like Germany's does now. But you can see the cohort. You can see that bulge right there. You can see the bulge. A lot of these people 
in a pre-industrial society would not be around. A lot of these people would not make it to see their 50th birthday. You know, in pre-industrial societies, a lot of these people wouldn't make it to see to make it to see their 35th birthday. And that's true. That was true then. And in pre-industrial countries now, it's still true. 